if anyone is reading this, I am probably dead. Thank God for that. I am not a good man, as you will soon find out. But that does not mean I cannot feel shame for it. Which is why I am here recording this message for whoever might find it. To give some semblance of an explanation for the things I've done, I do not expect to be forgiven. This is not me trying to make outlandish excuses for my heinous acts, nor is it the ramblings of a madman. It would have been so much more merciful had my mind gone insane. Make of this what you will, but I swear on every fiber of my being that still belongs to me that what I write here for you is the truth. My name is George Spencer. I'm a trucker working in America. Most of my days are spent driving on the road while I spend my nights sleeping on a tiny mattress with springs sticking out of it in the truck's driver's cabin. It was a hard and lonely life that few people could tolerate. But it was a living nonetheless. The pay was pretty good for someone with only a high school diploma like me, though I sometimes wonder if getting into this job was worth trading off what meager social life I had. I've always been kind of an introvert. That's probably why I was able to adjust to the truckers as well as I did. Even so, I had a close-knit circle of friends who'd been with me since elementary school all the way up to high school. They were all weird, quiet kids like me, and we got along well when everyone else avoided us. We tried to keep in touch after graduation, but the nature of my work meant that I couldn't join them whenever they decided to hang out. Eventually, I stopped contacting them altogether. Sometimes I wonder if they all still hang out without me or if they all went their separate ways like I did. Nowadays, I have to go for days without talking to any person save for the odd gas station attendant looking for a tip. I've considered getting a pet before to ease the burden of isolation, something like a hamster or guinea pig that'd be easy to care for with little maintenance in a small space. Maybe I might have ended up getting one had things gone differently. As a trucker, I delivered just about everything you'll find at the average department store. Canned foods, fresh vegetables, raw building materials for furniture, you name it. I've delivered a lot of stuff most normal people would never see. Nothing illegal, mind you. I'm far too boring and cautious to get involved in delivering drugs on the side like some other truckers I know. The worst thing I have to deliver by far is livestock. I know I said I wanted company on the road, but having a bunch of living, squilling barnyard animals on the back of the truck for days on end as I cart them to their slaughter, isn't really my idea of good company. All it does is make my already stressful life even more taxing than it already was. I seriously consider becoming a vegetarian after every single time I haul livestock. Animals may not be quite as smart as us or even able to feel emotions like people do, but whether or not animals have something as profound as a soul or individuality, you can't convince me for a second that the animals on the back of my truck didn't know exactly where they were going and why. Some primitive part of their prey brains must have told them that they'd be caught by the predators the moment they were born, and everything that came afterwards was little more than a drawn-out death blow. I can't imagine what it must be like for the people actually doing the killing every day. 
Although, if they saw the state of my life now, they'd probably be glad that their job only had them kill animals. It was during one of my livestock hauling jobs that the life I knew came to a screeching end. I was hauling a little over 500 pigs at the back of my truck across the Nevada desert. Aside from the lights of Las Vegas, there really isn't much to see or do in Nevada. The only state I can think of that's about as boring to drive through is Kansas. And even then, it had some yellow corn to spice up the scenery rather than the barren orange desert of Nevada, which seems to stretch on for miles with nothing in sight to even play or spy with. It was during long trips like these that I like to imagine myself as a road warrior in a post-apocalyptic world speeding through the desert roads of a dead civilization Mad Max style. Maybe it was a bit juvenile of me to do that, but it helped me ease the boredom when the podcast I listened to started feeling stale. The squealing of the pigs in the back of the truck made it hard to listen to or even imagine anything, though. The Nevada sun was unforgiving that day. I silently thanked the truck manufacturers for designing the driver cabin with the reliable air conditioner that spared me from the intense heat that made everything beyond its window look like a shimmering haze. The pigs I was transporting were less fortunate. The combined body heat of the hundred writhing bodies crammed next to each other in a metal trailer was already uncomfortable enough without the sun coming down on them. Despite what the packaging on the ingredients they get turned into might say, most of the people in charge of sourcing the meat don't give two shits about being humane to the animals when they were about to be killed anyways. Little oversights like how they were all being cooked half to death in the truck before they even touched the frying pan were of no concern as long as they were still alive and fresh by the time they reached the slaughterhouse for processing. Their squealing had kept me up the entire night before. I was still exhausted by the time my alarm rang. I was drowsy as hell and it was irresponsible for me to drive in that state. But I needed to start driving to keep up with my schedule if I wanted to keep my job. I forced myself back into the driver's seat and absentmindedly put my foot on the pedal. I reasoned that the odd car on the road would be aware enough of a giant truck to get out of the way and that there was no way someone would be out here on foot in the middle of nowhere. I was wrong. A man stepped onto the middle of the road. My eyes saw him from a mile away. But my sleep-deprived brain couldn't process that he was there until he was already under the truck. He didn't even get a chance to scream. The sensation of his body squelching under the wheel jolted me back to consciousness. His bones let out loud cracks underneath me as they were crushed under the tons worth of metal machinery. Adrenaline flooded my brain as I suddenly realized what I'd done. I slammed on the brakes and rushed out of the truck in a hurry. Whatever he looked like when he was alive, he'd become an unrecognizable mess of mangled flesh and broken bones after the truck was done with him. I didn't need to check for a pulse. He was well and truly dead. And if he wasn't, then killing him would have been a mercy at that point. My conscience told me to report the accident to the police and have them inform his family of what had happened. But in the end, my sense of self-preservation went out. I told myself that anybody who would willingly hang out on the road in the middle of nowhere probably had no one back home to miss him anyways. It was the only thing that helped ease the guilt of what I did next. I stripped the man of his clothes and tossed his naked body into the back of my truck. The pigs hadn't eaten since I loaded them onto the truck, so they were grateful for one last meal. They tripped over each other trying to get to him. 
their fat bodies slamming against each other for one last taste of dead flesh before they became one themselves. I've heard of the mafia feeding dead bodies to pigs before. That's why I got the idea in the first place. But nothing could have prepared me for the sound of it actually happening. The sound of crunching bones and tearing flesh amid the screams of ravenous pigs pressing against each other for a taste made the sound of him being crushed under the truck sound like music. Later in that night, I... I no, not yet. I, I, <laughs> what, this? Bad boy's got a few toys I didn't know of, eh? <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun.